Are you the type of person that wakes up of a morning and thinks, you know what, my child carrying SUV just isn't fast or powerful enough. I want to experience the delights of 0-62 in less than 5 seconds and my children need to feel what 155 miles an hour is like. If that's you, congratulations, you're mental, but also in luck. Audi has released just the car for you. This is the SQ7. Audi's Q7 is not a bad car at all. It's like a normal Audi, but massive. It offers space, technology, and an interesting look. Get one in black and you'll look like you gutted Darth Vader for a ride, but still, each to their own. The interior is covered in two things. One, fabulous materials, and two, technology. There's loads of the stuff. There's connectivity and Bluetooth and readouts and touch sensitive things and basically everything you could possibly want. But my favorite bit is the virtual cockpit, like the one you get in the Audi TT, because all the information you could possibly want is right in your eye line. And it means you don't have to bother with the slidey hidey screen. That means you can legitimately ignore your passengers because you're concentrating very intently on the road and your cockpit, which is good if, say, you've had an argument with one of them or they've just spilled ice cream all over your flawless leather. Because being the person you are, your SQ7 is here to transport your family around, not simply be a big car for one. As such, you can have seating for seven, serving space for all who need it, no matter of size. So it's big, it's practical, and it's full of toys. That much we know. It's also really fast. It's got a 4-litre diesel V8 engine that kicks out 429 brake horsepower and 663 pound foot. Audi says it'll do 0 to 62 in 4.9 seconds and its top speed is limited to 155 miles an hour, which is well, it's believable considering it has all of the torque, like all of it, in a little box that just fires the car down the road. Audi also says it'll manage nearly 40 mpg in UK money. As the shampoo ads used to say, now for the science bit. It's got all its grunt thanks to what is essentially a tri-charge setup. A big turbo for when you're going quickly, a little one for low down squirts, and an electrically powered compressor, or EPC, that spins up to 70,000 RPM to keep air flowing around the induction system, which keeps the engine as responsive as possible. It sounds very complicated and is, apparently, a production car first. So that means you should have a car that can do pretty much everything. And you know what? We've had a few hours with it in lovely Basel, where the weather has been everything. And I've been playing with a couple of modes, most of all. The first is comfort. It is like driving in butter. It's unbelievably smooth. It will go off-road, as I shall demonstrate now. See, I was off the road, and that's probably about as much as an SQ7 is going to do. But I can see, and it's a weird image, some people taking these on a circuit, because in dynamic mode, it's a bit of a beast. It sounds proper meaty. I mean, it's a bit quiet inside the car, but crack the window. and it sounds really, really good. But of course, sticking it in dynamic turns the wick up and everything becomes more aggressive. So the gearbox goes into sport and it just goes into angry mode and it flies. It absolutely flies. But here's the thing, when you nail the throttle from rest, you can feel yourself be pushed back a little bit in the seat, you know, proper standard acceleration stuff. But when you're on the motorway, when you're giving it some, just in general, the sensation of speed is somewhat lost. You don't feel like you're going that quickly. What it does do though, that three charger setup, is they say that, oh, it eliminates turbo lag forever. And I couldn't feel any. If there is a perceivable amount, you have to be some kind of superhuman to get it because its torque is available from so low down. Pin the throttle and bang, you're gone. The gearbox is, it's really good actually. It's very smooth, it's very precise, it's not slow, it's not nasty. It's, it's a proper, proper bit of kit. In sport mode, it does become super aggressive. 
And once I was taking off, giving it some, and the change was really quite violent, but in the best possible way, designed to feel like it's a proper sporty car, because of course that's what the S cars are. They're supposed to be that, that step above the normal ones, that little bit quicker, that little bit more aggressive. You can spec carbon ceramic brakes for this thing. They work really well in this application. They're easy to modulate, they're not too aggressive when you are just around town, but when you're on it, you can stamp on them and they manage to halt two and a bit tons of angry blue SUV. No bad thing at all. What you can feel though is you can definitely feel the weight of the car. When you're going into a corner, you can feel its bulk moving. But it does have trick suspension because it's got air springs, so it will pump up one side of the car to try and eliminate that. It's not the most rigid car in the world, but it is an SUV, so I wouldn't expect it to feel like that. Now, something I'm not really a fan of is the fact it has two screens, because why not just commit to one, like they did in the TT? The virtual cockpit gives me all the information I need, so why not just have it? Why, why do we need that? It seems extraneous, it's, it's unnecessary. Um, other than that, things I'm not a fan of, it's not the prettiest thing in the world, even with all the S bits on it. And yes, while it is very fast, and it is quite fun, it's still not the most engaging car to drive, but you do have to give it some room because it is an SUV. It's also massive, it's so big. So if you, if you live on a street that's, say, approaching narrow, you will find yourself instinctively breathing in just to try and bring the car in a little bit. That's not ideal for, say, countries with small roads, like um, England. Mm. But America, you guys will be fine, and you're getting this car. You can have an SQ7. When you think about what this is up against, you've got, what, BMW X5 M50D, you've got the Range Rover with the V8 diesel, but actually, performance-wise, this is more on par with the supercharged V8 petrol Range Rover Sport. While it's not as raucous as the Range Rover, it also doesn't feel as Range Rovery. This does feel immensely German. The materials, they're very luxurious, and the interior design is very good, but it's also quite stark. It feels quite clinical. It's some, um, well, it's a designer kitchen on wheels, essentially. And some people like that kind of thing, but I think the Range Rover offers you a little bit more, well, it's a bit more homely. This goes about its job with a scalpel-like precision, and it does it very, very well. And for some, that's perfect. For others, you might want something with a little bit more soul. What impresses most is the sheer speed of the thing. I'm not sure many would go for its high price, but those who do will have some fun, as will, no doubt, their kids. So what Audi's made here, it feels very strange because it's so fast, but it's also so comfortable and so smooth when you want it to be. It's a car of many faces and it seems to wear pretty much all of them very well.